Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be doing something different. Uh, we'll be making uh, some improvements on the original Flappy Bird tutorial that I have done like a while ago. Um, for that tutorial, I get a lot of requests on how to add a restart function for that game because that game at the moment, uh, once you hit a pipe, you'll have to restart the game from within Visual Studio or load it up as a independent exe file. Uh, but what we wanted to do is to add a restart function in the game so when the game ends you can just click a button or press a key on the keyboard and the game will restart so you, right so let's get started on this one um at the moment i have the uh, original flappy bird game loaded i got this one from the github repo and loaded it up in visual studio um first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to move the score text slightly there just to the edge of the one of it because we're going to be adding some more stuff to the score text when the game ends okay so first let's do the keyboard way of restarting the game so i'm just going to right click on the form go to view code uh what we want to do is i want to add another boolean here so i'm just going to add a boolean called game over we'll set this one to false right so what that will do is that will let us um sort of leave a condition for when we want to enter the R key in the keyboard. Okay, so we can do that here. If we go to um, game key is up, we'll make another if statement here. The e dot e code equals equals keys dot R and game over boolean we need to be true. Okay, so if the game over is true and we press the R button, then we can uh, run the restart function. Okay, and we'll just run it now actually, and we'll create it afterwards. So we'll call it restart game, then do the semicolon like so. So we haven't created this function yet, we'll do that in a minute. So, and then that's the game keys up um, event. Then we have the end game uh, function here, and then what I can do here is inside the game over bit, they press R to restart, or we'll press R to retry sound better okay so with that one done i'm gonna set game over to true because that's when you know the game ends right okay so let's do the restart function so right at the bottom uh just make sure you leave two curly brackets so one is for the namespace one is for the class and inside the class this is where we need to add our stuff right so here i'm gonna say private void restart game okay just to be sure i want to make sure that the red line is gone so to begin with this one we're going to set game over to false because right now we can restart the game so the game will be running and then we need to reset the position for the flappy bird and the pipes so if i go back to the design view click on the flappy bird here this is a part called location we just copy Copy that location there's 69228. Okay, so and then I can say come here and say flappy bird the location is equals to new point. We're creating a new point of x and y value, and then we're saving it into the location of the file. So instead of doing left and then top, we're doing it both together. Okay, and um for the pipes, we only need the left position anyway. So I'm gonna say pipe top dot left is equals to 800. So it pushes it to 800 pixels, and then pipe bottom dot left is equals to 1200 so it pushes it to the 1200 pixel off screen okay so with that one done we do reset the score reset the pipe speed to eight not zero we reset the score text otherwise the label is going to be showing the old text on there until it updates and then we're going to say score oh, to do an equals here oh zero okay so just to reset the text and right after that we're going to say game timer dot start with i think we can try this one out now so at the moment let's go ahead and try this i'm just going to end the game so right there as you fall down it says press uh, press r to retry so i'm going to press r as you can see the pipes moved away yep move further a bit so the pipes can speed up nice
Okay, this wipes our speed up. I will end the game, restart, and then pipes are back to the normal speed. Okay, that's great. So this is the first way to do it. So you can do it, this one with your keyboard and then just let the user know that you have done it. And the second way is to do it with a click. Okay, so now let's do the restart function with the click event. So first, I'm going to um, I have an image here for a restart pixel image. I'm just going to import that to the resources. I'm just going to import this one to the resources fairly quickly. It's going to go properties, double click on resources. I can just drag and drop it in there. Okay, there you go. So the restart image is there now and I'm just going to save it. Right, so let's go ahead and get a picture box from the tool toolbox. Make it like a square here. Right click, choose image. Put a restart image there. And then we're just going to set it to stretch image. Like so. Okay. So with the image there, I'm going to go here and say restart image. I'm just going to name this image basically to restart image. Go to the events window, go to click and say restart click event. Okay, so the restart click event will be added to the code. And inside of this one, all we need to do is just need to run the restart restart game function, the restart image. Yeah, so we can just run the restart game function. In the beginning of the game, we need to make this uh, picture box invisible, right? So when the game is running, it doesn't need to show. But that's what we're going to do here. So under the score text, the restart image dot enabled, it go to false. So we disable the picture box and then restart image dot visible. We set that to false as well. Okay. So when the restart um, game function runs, it will basically um, hide it away from the display. But when the game ends, we want to display it back again. So I'm going to copy these two lines here. And put them inside of the end game function. So here we are. Yeah, so I can just paste it clear. And then we're going to set this to true. So uh, restart enabled is true. So it can be clicked on and visible to true. So, you know, you're clicking in the on the screen. Okay. And lastly, what we'll do is we'll run the restart function right inside the form constructor so i can go say restart game function here so what that will do is that will just reset everything and then do it so that way we don't have to necessarily say it you know to run anything specific from the instructor here so i'm just going to click start okay so the game has ended right now i have an option to press r we know that already works so let me just go and click on the picture box so if I click on the picture box it disappears play the game Okay, and then it appears again. So now I can either click it or I'm just going to press R now to see if that works. Good. Press the restart button here. Um, I want to add a couple of more bits to the game, uh, which I didn't get to add last time. Uh, one was uh, making this label here uh, transparent. So at the moment it's got a back color and I did struggle with the back color a little bit just to make it similar to this one. Um, I have found a way to actually make it transparent. So let's go and do that quickly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go click on the ground image first. Go to the image. I'm going to set that to none. So there's no image there. So we're going to add that image to the background image instead. So I'm going to click on the background image for the ground. Then select ground and click OK. All right, so with that one done, I'm also going to set the back color of the ground to um, transparent. So I'm just going to load it all the way up to the top and then set that to transparent. OK. All right, great. So and then also what I'm going to do is we'll just go to the code view. Right. And we'll do that before the restart game function runs. So instead of the form constructor, we can just set um, set the parent of this label to this picture box, basically, right? So one of the ways to do that is going to be to say ground, 
to controls to add and um, score text right and then if you add the score text to me now this score text would become the child of the ground picture box right so that will inherit the background and everything else so it will be perfectly um uh, transparent so now we're gonna have to say score text dot left dot leave left is equal to 20 so it's 20 pixels from the left and score text dot top is going to be equals to um, 25 so we'll just try that for now so that way it's uh, 20 pixels from the x-axis and uh, 25 pixels from the y-axis so, so click start Okay, so it's showing up here. That's perfectly fine. No change there. But I think one of the things we need to change here is the back color. So if I click on the score there, and then change the back color from that one to transparent. Okay, so if I set it to transparent, it looks blue here because it's right now it's in the design view, it's inheriting from the form. But when the code runs, it's going to be inheriting its properties, background properties from the ground instead. Okay, so if we try that now, Oh, there you go. So at the moment, the score is completely transparent on the ground. Okay, so if you want to see just how nicely actually lazy on top of there, if I just change that to say um, five, so we want to just be on top of that image there. So as you can see, it's completely transparent to the background of the label. Right, I want to move them back to 25. It looks a bit aligned. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention is at the moment we're hard coding the values for the pipe positions, right? So 800 by 950, and then another 800 by 1200. You can also use random to randomize the values between these numbers, right? So if you wanted to say, for example, um, randomly make the pipes appear, whatever they do, uh, we can just use a random class here to do that. So we can say random rnd equals to new random. So by doing that, by using the random one, we can just generate a number between two values, right? So if I go to here, for example, so at the moment we're looking at 800 pixels at a minimum, right? So say, for example, if I said, um, instead of that, so say rnd dot next is between um, 750 and 1300, right? So it's going to generate a number between these two values and it's going to position the pipe to the value, whichever one they generates. Take the same value here and say, for example, 850 by 1500. Okay, so by doing that, let's just try to run the game now and see how becomes predictable or unpredictable so at the moment they do get spawned in the same location that we put them but then as you can see now they're completely different we can't tell which pipe is going to come first are they going to come together Hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, let me know what you think about it on the comments please leave a like and a subscribe if you can and i will see you on the next tutorial